This is the sixth part of the Crete Fashion Guide. In it I will tell you about useful things and mechanisms, about the creation of trolley gizmos and about trains. Thank you for writing comments and promoting my videos. The channel began to develop great after the guides will cover. And I congratulate you on the new 2023 year and Christmas. There are useful things in Crete fashion that work on compressed air and let's look at them. To begin with, make a copper cylinder, it is needed in order to store compressed air for yourself. In order to power the cylinder, put it directly under the rotation source. Compressed air will begin to flow into it and rotation can only be brought from this side, where there is such a pipka. The speed of rotation directly affects the filling speed of the cylinder, the higher, the faster it will fill, and at the end you will see such a cotton. And putting on engineering glasses and pointing at the balloon, you will see what kind of load it creates while it is being filled. You can also put the balloon on yourself, which will give you a little protection, by the way, it does not break. And putting on a balloon, all objects that work on compressed air will have such a strip. To create a copper cylinder, you will need two indesite alloys, one shaft, three copper ingots and a copper block. Next, we'll talk to you about the potato cannon. This is a long-range gun that shoots along a mounted trajectory. Vegetables, fruits, cakes and their derivatives are used as ammunition. If you have any other mods, the list may differ. The damage depends on what you use. Also, if you shoot some unusual fruit or vegetable, such as a golden apple, then you will apply the effect exactly the same as if you ate it yourself. If you use a gun without wearing a copper cylinder, then it will consume its own strength, and if you put it on, then compressed air from the cylinder will be consumed. By the way, the gun can be enchanted, and it can be created in a mechanical crafter using an andesite alloy, a precision mechanism, three liquid pipes and two copper ingots. Next, I will tell you about an elongated arm, in fact it is a prosthesis that increases the distance of interaction with blocks. It is best to put it in your left hand and now it will extend its properties to all the objects that you hold in your right hand. You will also be able to open blocks at a long distance, but you will not be able to kill mobs and players at a greater distance, the distance will be the same as with conventional weapons. And yet, an elongated hand gives a passive bonus to discarding, but for every action that you do with this hand, its strength will decrease. Therefore, it is better to use a copper cylinder with compressed air and then you will consume it instead of strength. You can create an elongated arm in a mechanical crafter using a brass ingot, a precision mechanism, six sticks, and a brass arm. And then I'll tell you about the diving helmet. It is needed in order to hold your breath underwater for a long time if you are wearing a copper cylinder that is filled with compressed air. Visually, you will have an endless buff of water breathing and you will also have an indicator next to oxygen with a time timer. In addition to the helmet, there are also diving boots, which will allow you to sink quickly, while you can walk and jump underwater, but you will not be able to swim. As a bonus, the conveyor belt with these shoes will not affect you. And to create them, you will need four copper ingots and two andesite alloys. A diving helmet is made of five copper ingots and any glass. Next, I'll tell you about the ghost bell, but first you have to make a special bell, it's called that, right mouse click, archery, throwing something, or a rest signal, all this will turn on the bell. Next, we put the soul sand under a special bell, set it on fire and get a ghostly bell. There is also a second, this is the creation of a shower using a fan and the same flame from the sand, but as for me, the first method is more convenient. And actually, what does he do? Take it in your hand, left or right, it doesn't matter, and it will start showing areas where aggressive mobs will appear. Like other bells, you can also install it, call on it, leave something in it and it will make a sound, while also showing the areas of the appearance of mobs, but already at a greater distance. This way you can easily determine which areas should be highlighted so that no one accidentally falls asleep. And to create a special bell, you will need a brass block and a brass sheet. Next, we'll talk to you about the brown toolbox. It has 8 slots and each of these slots is capable of accommodating 256 units. In addition, it is able to collect similar items from your inventory if you click on this button. Also, this box is able to save its contents if you break it, which is very convenient. 
This box has some more interesting functions. Go to the key assignment management settings, find the Crete section and assign the key access to the nearest toolboxes, this is a minus for me. If you press this key, then you will be able to select the items that are in your drawer, I will choose, say, a stone. Please note that you have a special rim around this stone on the panel of the hand slot. These stones will be replenished endlessly as long as they are in your box, but as soon as you move away to a sufficient distance, note that it has gone out, it is no longer burning red. If we get a little closer, it burns again. If we are out of the work area of this box, we will not replenish items, and if we get a little closer, it will be executed again. If you want to remove this stone, click on the center button. You can also quickly clear your inventory of similar items, if they are in the drawer. Using the same button I was talking about. And now our inventory is cleared. Also an interesting fact, this box can interact with mechanisms, which will allow you to place objects in it automatically. And it can also be repainted with dyes in any color. To create a brown toolbox, you will need a gear, two gold leaves, a chest and leather. And now I'll tell you about the schematic gun. It is needed in order to copy buildings. But first, let's get ready. We will need a chest, a book, a lot of gunpowder, an empty schematic, a schematic and a pen and a schematic table. We'll put a schematic cannon and a schematic table somewhere. And we will copy this building. But before that, go to Settings, Key Assignment Controls, find the Crite section and set a special button for the Focus Tools menu, this is a plus for me. Then take the schematic and pen in hand, click on one block and the second of your selected area, which you will copy. There is also a second option, how to change its size. Please note that when I hover over other faces, they are highlighted differently. If you pinch the contour and start rotating the wheel, then you can change the size of this area. Editing it. Once you have decided on the area, right click on an empty space and here you can set the name, also cancel everything, save the root folder of the game, I'll tell you where later, or click save and expand immediately, which we will do. Here we can already choose the place where we will place the copy building, I will choose here. After removing the schematic from the hand, you will see a ghostly model of how it will look, and if we return it back to the hand, then we will have the following interface. Hold plus to change tasks. By holding this special key and rotating the wheel, you can choose what you will do. Once you have decided, pinch the contour and rotate the wheel and you can change the position of the selected area. Also with other modes. The last setting is printing. It will allow you to copy buildings and install them immediately, instantly without a schematic cannon. But only if you are creative. But we will play fair, we install a 3D model, if you do not want to use this menu or it is inconvenient for you, then hold the spike and right mouse button anywhere and you will have a simpler menu to adjust the position change. Then we go to the schematic cannon and put some chest next to it. We open the schematic gun in our schematic, where we have already recorded 3D model, we put it here. We put the gunpowder here, it will be used as fuel, and then we need a list of materials that need to load our gun. We put an ordinary book here and we get a list of materials. If you open this book, you will see what you need to put in this chest here. You cannot use this book and throw resources from memory. My design is simple, but you can have much more. I threw in all the resources for the construction, except for the gear, you can reuse this book to test yourself. And we show in blue what we don't have, everything else is green. Adding the necessary gear and click on the start button and the construction begins. Finally, I'll tell you about the other buttons. This is the button for starting, pausing and stopping construction, and this button is responsible for the construction modes, which will take into account the cannon if you set them. With a clamped shift, you will see what each mode does. Every time you save a 3D model using schematics and a pen, it is saved on your computer's local folder. And if you open the schematic table, you can click on this button and you will be taken to the following directory, point Minecraft schematics and here you will have all your saved 3D models for future construction.
In this slot you put an empty schematic and you can choose any schematic that is in your directory folder, for example, I will choose Shelby. You get a completed schematic and it can already be used in your schematic canon for construction. How can this be used? For example, I found a map with a beautiful house that I want for myself. Then I downloaded this map and enter this world. Then, using the pen schematics, we select our house, expand the area so that everything fits and save it, and then we can safely leave the world. And you will already have such a file with the name in the schematics folder. Then we go into the right world and upload our downloaded house to an empty schematic. We choose the area where it will be built for us. Well, it remains to download the necessary resources, of which there will be a lot if you open the book and start building. That's how it's done. And recipes. To create an empty schematic, you will need blue dye and paper. For the schematic of the pen, you will need a pen and an empty schematic. For a schematic table, you will need any three slabs and two smooth stones, and for a schematic cannon, you will need two iron blocks, two blocks of some wood, two smooth stones and a distributor. Next, I will tell you about the rod of symmetry, which will allow you to mirror all your actions relative to the selected point. And how to use it, right click on some block and you will install a special mirror that will reflect all your actions in the chosen direction, whether it is the right mouse button or the left, which will save you time. To move this mirror, just right click on another block, and if you want to remove it completely, then click on the mirror. Also, take the wand in your hand and hold the shift plus the right mouse button and you will go to its settings menu. Here you can adjust along which aspen will reflect by simply rotating the mouse wheel and also in a specialized single, double or triple mode. It's much easier to show than to explain. To put it simply, by changing the mode, you remove along which plane the blocks that you put will be reflected. And yes, keep in mind that the blocks are real, they will be taken from your inventory and their consumption will increase. The same thing works with the tool, its wear will be much greater. And to make a rod of symmetry, you have to use a mechanical crafter. You will need any three glasses, an ender pearl, a precision mechanism, a brass ingot and obsidian. Next, I'll tell you about the drawings that will allow you to quickly craft some specific recipes without a workbench. There are only three types of drawings, as you noticed. The first is where you have one slot, where you have four slots and where you have nine slots. They can be placed on any surface, including on the floor, even on the ceiling. And learn more about how to use them. Imagine that this one drawing is one slot, and here we have four slots. And I want to make a recipe in this one, in the far left from the top. Click on it and let's set some recipe, for example, an oven. This slot is optional and is not needed for anything, well, just as a decoration, let's put Ariston here. You can remove this recipe or accept it. If you right click, you will have one stove. If you pinch the shift, you will notice that you can immediately create 8 stoves at a time. Right click and we have created stoves. Then the cobblestones were highlighted in orange and this shows that we no longer have them. In exactly the same way, you can fill in each cell and the more you have them, the more recipes will be available. If you don't need a recipe and you want to remove it, just click the left mouse button and it will disappear and you can set a new one instead. And to create a drawing, you will need a painting and a workbench. Next, I'll tell you how to improve the mechanical crafter. I say that you can upload recipes manually or use funnels and supply ingredients already in them. But there is an easier way and I forgot about it. Take a wrench in your hand. If you hover over the back faces of mechanical craters, you will notice such highlighted areas. By right-clicking on them, you can combine the inventories of several Vadim craters, creating a large common inventory. For example, you can put a funnel and a chest on it, then you can throw iron there and all the slots will automatically start filling up and you will have continuous crafting while there is iron. I will also tell you about the plug on the crafter slot. The inventories of all mechanical crafters are combined. And I want to continuously make buckets, let's say. To do this, we can take the plugs and click on unnecessary slots in the mechanical crater, thereby closing them. Now if we throw iron in here, 
then buckets will be continuously created. And you can remove the plugs by right-clicking on them. To create a plug on the crafter slot, you will need three pieces of brass. Next, we'll talk to you about trolley gizmos. You can make automatic mobile farms with them. And yes, it's not trains yet. And to create them, you will need a trolley collector. It can be installed on any block rail. We take any trolley and right-click on the collector. It was installed there. Next, we will build some kind of structure and glue it all together. If we give redstone a signal to the trolley collector, it will assemble and will already move as one. With a wrench, the right mouse button will assemble it and it will already be in your inventory, which will allow it to be quickly moved to another place. If you want to disassemble the trolley, then break the trolley itself and then the blocks that are attached to it will become material. Because of the shaders, a couple of blocks are missing, but she actually has them. Or drive your building into a trolley collector, where the restun signal is turned off. You can attach any mechanisms from the Karita mod to the trolleys, and some of them can work simply by moving the trolley. You can also attach inventory items, such as chests or storage items, or liquid tanks. When the trolley is assembled, you will not be able to open blocks that have their own inventory, but you can interact with them through interfaces. Sometimes you will have to use unbalanced trolleys and they will rotate incorrectly, not the way you would like. Take a wrench in your hands and point at the trolley collector and you will be able to change the driving modes here. Rotation in the direction of movement, pause during rotation and lock rotation. I will most likely choose this mode. The arrow on the trolley collector shows which side will be considered leading, main or front. And let's put our trolley thing up and reassemble it again. Okay, now she moves differently, agree. Also in the fashion of Crete there is a very useful thing called a trolley connector. With this thing you can connect not only ordinary trolleys, but also trolley gizmos. Take the trolley connector and click on one trolley or trolley thing, then on the second and they will connect. And if you take a wrench and click on any of the trolleys, it will disappear. You can also connect several trolley gizmos into one. To do this, you should have two trolley collectors, each of which should have a trolley and you should glue so that these two structures intersect, that is, in fact, there should be one structure. Next, give a rest and signal to any of the assemblers and the structure will assemble. As a result, we get what we have. For the trolley collector, you will need any two woods, two indesite alloys and rest and dust. For the trolley connector, you will need two zit alloys and an iron sheet. It's time to talk about trains, there will be a lot of information, but how else? And the first thing we will start with is a story about railway tracks. The first and width are three blocks. Secondly, they can be installed at different angles. Third, the paths may intersect. Fourth, you can set many paths at a time, even without being in the creative. A simple right click will put the railway tracks one unit at a time. To put a lot of them at once, click on one of the already installed railway tracks and you will see the installation trajectory in yellow. Also, if you are in survival mode, you will be shown an indicator of how many paths you will put depending on how far you have gone. The second right click will install them. An impossible trajectory for installation will be indicated by a dashed line. If you want to exit the construction mode, hold down the shift and right click on some place. Construction will stop. Paths can be quickly removed with a wrench if you sit down and right click on them. In this case, the trajectory is built through the air and if we put our rails, then there will be nothing under them and you can fall. Of course, the train will pass there, but you can install some blocks in the second hand and also try to install the tracks, and you will notice that these blocks will be installed under them, then it is much more aesthetically pleasing and safer. Also, by clamping the contour during construction, you can make your trajectory sharper. To create a railway track and you must use a sequential assembly, which you will have two autonomous activators, in which each will have a piece of iron or a piece of zinc and at the end there should be a mechanical press. You can use stone slabs, smooth stone slabs and indesite slabs as ingredients. 
And now we will build our first train, but we need to prepare. And you will need at least one red seat, a railway station, a train controller, a railway housing, super glue and what you will make your belt out of, actually. We take the station in our hands and point at some railway track, you will find such a pointer, it shows where you will have a stop point, and the arrow accordingly indicates the direction of movement of the train that will be built. Right click and install the station next to it. Then we open the station, click on the create a new train button and you will have such a blue color on the railway track. By clicking the right mouse button, you will have the basis of the first car for the construction of the train, but it will appear only in the creative. In survival, you need to have a railway building and they already click on this place and then it will appear. After installing the first base for the car, you will notice that the tracks that are behind will also turn blue and you can add additional cars, as many as you like. You can also change the appearance of the blank for the construction of the train by clicking on one of the three tracks that are under it. Not by the upper part, but by the paths, and accordingly, they will look a little different. And around the base we begin to build our train. It's a long process, so I'll speed it up. And that's what we get as a result. Then we take the train controller and install it on any of the cars. The train won't assemble without him. We also install a red seat so that it is convenient for us to control the controller. All blocks should be glued to the blank of your car. In order for everything to work correctly, glue only one bundle of construction to one blank of the car, do not make one huge healthy one. I have it all divided into four cars. And the moment of truth. We approach the station, open it and click to assemble the train. Next, enter the name, I've already done this undercard and click the check mark. All the blocks have stuck together and now they have ceased to be material. If your train is assembled, the controller will change its appearance. Also by opening the station there is a button to disassemble the train and the blocks will become tangible again. And yes, a very popular mistake when creating a train, why is it not going to, you just put the controller on the wrong side, rearrange it and try again and most likely everything will work. An important point, before controlling the controller, first sit on the seat, right click on it, then right click on the controller. Driving straight is carried out by pressing the double Y button, and if you want to go back, then press the C button. If there is a fork in front of you and you need to turn left, press A and double Y, and if to the right, then D and double Y, navigate by the arrow in the new interface. If there is a steam whistle on your train and you press the run key while driving, then you will hear a horn. By the way, while driving, if you drive and turn the wheel, you can set a threshold speed above which your train will not accelerate. If your train is stuck or has an accident, then you can use a wrench to move it, right click on it and go to another section of the track, also right click here and the train will be moved. Also, when you drive up to the station, you can hold down the space bar to automatically get to it and stop. When you are still assembling the train, you can add some inventory and put some fuel in there. Then the train will move much faster, but it will consume it. By the way, you can build a railway track to the infernal portal, and it will appear on the other side. And you can even enter the portal and leave from the other side of the journey between worlds. By the way, you can make a driver out of any mob, and he will drive the train instead of you, carrying you according to the schedule. To do this, you must have at least two railway stations on the entire route, and then open these stations, click on the track station and rename them, this needs to be done with all. Next, we need a machinist, and there can be absolutely any mob, but I will choose from these. The choice fell on the pig, then I take the leash and tie it. Then my goal is to seat or push the pig on the red seat in front of the controller. It worked. Next, we will need a train schedule. Take the schedule in your hand, right click, and the following interface will open. Click on the add action button and here you will have three actions, go to the station, change the name of the schedule and change the traction. Traction is the speed at which your train will move. We need to go to the station first. Click on this empty field and choose which station you will go to at the very beginning. We will have station 2, because we are at the first station. 
and you will have the following interface. The train will leave station 2 when 5 seconds have passed. Also by clicking here, you can set an additional condition, such as the time of day, at what time he will leave, I'm not sure about this function, I haven't figured it out, maybe someone will tell me in the comments. The condition of the liquid cargo. The train will leave if you have more than 10 buckets. And this is a slot for filters, if you want to set for a specific liquid. The condition of the cargo is the same as for the liquid, only here you set the items and you will not have buckets, but pieces or stacks. Wireless signal. Here you have two slots where you can set the frequencies. And if you send wristone signals to a wireless transmitter with the same frequencies, then the train is going, or it will leave if the signal is not sent to the specified frequency. Boarding passengers. With this condition, the train will not move if there are not enough passengers. You can set the exact value or more than the specified digits. The cargo has not changed. The train will leave if no one takes anything from it within 5 seconds. Chang is unloaded, well, everything is clear here. The station is powered up, I didn't understand what it meant, I sent a restun signal to it, but it had no effect. Accordingly, the train will leave the station if these conditions are met, I will remove it. But where do I need to add another station? I will click the duplicate button and change from station 2 to station 1. And here I want to set the conditions, for example, boarding passengers at least one. And let's test everything. To do this, I specifically moved our belt so that it was between two stations, between the first and between the second. We take the schedule and give our pigs. Now she will go to the second station, to this one. I hope she won't let me down and everything will work out. He will wait there for five seconds and leave for the station alone. So, so far everything is fine, everything is working. And she won't move on, because someone has to get on the train. By the way, if you click on Piggy and you can take the schedule from her and edit it at any time. Speaking of editing, you have an arrow like this, relative to which the beginning of your schedule is being conducted and you can move it using these two buttons. The train will automatically drive up without fulfilling the conditions to the station relative to which the countdown is being conducted. And another situation, where at each station the train will wait for 2 seconds. I didn't just set such easy conditions, the train will endlessly perform this sequence of actions, because this option is enabled in your schedule. You can also do branching. For example, you have such a sequence of actions. The belt contains more than 10 pieces of obsidian and you go further down the list. Have you noticed this alternative condition button here? By clicking on it, you can create another such column and create a new sequence, thereby creating a branching in the schedule. Sometimes emergency situations occur with drivers, so instead of live mobs, you can use burners in a flash, gluing them in front of the controller and giving the burners a schedule. Also, Trains may collide, getting into an accident, in this state the train will not move. To bring the train to life, take a wrench and right-click on the train. Next, step back a little and click on some section of the railway track and the train will be transferred there. Now he can go again. On the endless roads of Minecraft. And in general, in this way you can transfer any trains, even those that work, if they are in an inconvenient place for you. For the train schedule, you will need paper and a strong sheet. A durable sheet is made using a sequential assembly, where lava is poured from a dispenser onto powdered obsidian and then onto two mechanical presses. And to make a railway case, you have to right-click on the brass case with a strong sheet. Well, for a railway station you will need one railway case and a compass. Next, we will talk about railway traffic lights. They are needed in order to regulate disputed sections of railway tracks where two trains can cross and collide, causing an accident. But first turn off the shaders or you won't see one of the hint elements. Taking a railway traffic light by hand, you will see a special line that will help us adjust our traffic lights. Our task is to identify a dangerous area with the help of traffic lights for each of the trains. We are installing the first traffic light. To begin with, click on some railway track and install a traffic light nearby. 
The arrow shows the direction where we will move the train. Automatic trains will never be able to travel in the opposite direction from the arrow. One traffic light is not enough, we put the second one. With its installation, we will complete the allocation of the danger zone for the first train. We will do the same for the second train that travels around this circle. We install one traffic light here and a second traffic light here. In fact, with the help of traffic lights, we have divided our path into zones or segments of different colors, in our case green and yellow, where trains can intersect and collide. Then, using the key, we eliminate the consequences of the accident for each train, putting them on the rails. Now the train that first entered the danger zone will be the main one, and the one that did not have time will stop and let it pass at the nearest traffic light. In simple terms, put traffic lights where you have intersections or intersections, the trajectory of different trains, so that they do not collide, breaking them into segments. If you have a traffic light and you want to put another one, but you don't have enough space, you can just put another one on the same arrow. With the help of another traffic light. And the most economical option is like this. In addition, for clarity, you can install a gas discharge indicator on a railway traffic light, where the red color prohibits movement, and the white one allows. If you click on the traffic light with a wrench, then you will switch it to the second mode. But after reading the tip in the correct fashion, I still didn't understand what he was doing. So if you figure it out, tell me in the comments. When submitting an arrest, you can change the traffic light modes from permissive to forbidding. If a comparator is connected to the traffic light and it is in the forbidding mode, then you will have a growth signal generated. And recipes. For a railway traffic light, you will need a railway housing and an electronic lamp. Next, I will tell you about the railway observer, which gives a signal when any train passes over this plate. Also in this observer there is a slot for a filter where an object can be placed and the observer will determine if this item is in the inventory of the train, if there is a booter signal. This observer also works with liquids. Just place a bucket of this liquid in the filter slot. And to create it, you will need a railway housing and some kind of pressure plate. That's all my friends, it was the last part of the fashion guide crate. I want to say thanks again to those people who corrected me in the comments, suggested how certain things work correctly. If I get my hands on it, then I will combine all the guides into one, without introductions, so that it is purely on the case and also add your comments where you corrected me. And Endurka was with you, so far.